Once upon a time, there lived two families, Twyla, Tyler, and Emily, and Ken, Cassie, Paul, and Carrie. Until one day, Ken and Twyla fell in love, and the two families became one, and they all lived happily ever after. Well, maybe it wasn't quite that simple. It's a routine evening at the Rossens' house, as they work to pull together dinner large enough to feed a small village. You'd never guess that just eight years ago, this family was not one, but two, and all practically strangers. With the passing of Ken's wife and the breakup of Twyla's first marriage, both found true love again and exchanged vows in hopes that they could create a new home for themselves and their children. I think we're able to portray a good role model of, of what a good marriage is like, um, you know, being affectionate, working out difficulties that, that they've seen us go through. But like many adults, Ken and Twyla had no experience in bringing two separate families together. Now with the increased, increased divorce rate and the increasing numbers of um, remarriages that are going on, um, there are issues that none of us were taught to deal with when we were growing up and learning how to parent. Hi, Memory. How are you? Dr. Susan Buttress says that's where your child's pediatrician can become a source of guidance. We as pediatricians have realized that it's very important that we help families with this. Children are intimately involved when parents are remarried. While Ken's children were teens at the time of his remarriage, Twyla's children, Tyler and Emily, were still young children, and for Emily, the concept of a blended family was sometimes hard to grasp. Well, I get more presents on holidays, so that's pretty much how I just handled it when I was little. As a two-year-old, Emily had some trouble making sense of the drastic change in her family. She's not alone. It is estimated that 50% of first marriages are likely to end in divorce, and 10% of children will find themselves in a step or blended family sometime in their lives. These changing times have called for new ways for children to cope with remarriage. Emily, now a mature 10-year-old, has found one of them. There are all types of little groups. Um, there's one at my school. Um, it's called What About Me? and it's a divorce group and we meet every Thursday and all of us get together and just talk about like our feelings and just talk about how we're dealing with it. She says all children should try to find someone to talk to. It's like you know that you're not the only kid in the world whose parents are divorced. And although creating a strong family is a lifelong process, Twyla says ironing out issues such as discipline before the family became one helped to prevent many potential problems. We had both been uh, to a counselor before we married who recommended that the biological parent do the disciplining and we've pretty much um, stuck by that. I firmly believe that that working out that discipline can, can make the biggest difference in the success of the family. While integrating a new parent into a home can often be a challenge, Ken believes mutual respect is what Emily and her brother needed to feel happy and secure. Well, since their father is still a big part of their lives, I didn't try to become a father figure, so to speak. I tried to be more or less uh, a good friend and uh, maybe an advisor. And, and it seems to have worked. Nearly eight years later, this blended family has not only become stronger, but continues to grow with the addition of a son-in-law, a grandchild, and one loving dog. We just consider ourselves as just one big happy family because we've all grown up together. I've lived here for as pretty much far back as I can remember. So I've just grown up with them and just, I love them.